now we're ready to talk about that linked list exercise you just went through. And I want to emphasize again, this is another one of these exercises where not everybody succeeds. Do not feel bad, because let me tell you something. When we created OpenMP back in the late 90s, I was part of that group that, that helped create the very first version of OpenMP. Yes, I really am that old. Um, so when we were thinking about OpenMP, most of us were Fortran programmers, and we were thinking scientific computing. And, and that's all array-based. Set up these big arrays and then have loops over the arrays, you know, solve differential equations, do linear algebra. So it was all very much driven by array-based scientific computing. No one even thought of doing something weird like bouncing around a linked list or, or that kind of stuff. You, we didn't do those in Fortran 77, so, you know, forget it. Um, and recursion? Oh, no way. You know, there isn't recursion in the old Fortran. So there was a lot of stuff in, in OpenMP that just wasn't there from the beginning that we've added since then. So the linked list is really, really hard to do with traditional original OpenMP. And that's basically what you have up till now. So let's take a close look at this. Remember, you have, you point to the head of a list, and then you have a while loop that's going to walk through the list until you get to the end of the loop. So that's what's going on. Let me show you my solution to doing this, and it's not pretty. So first step, I'm going to go through that list, and I'm going to count how many elements there are in the list. So you see, I walk the list once just to see how many elements there are. Now I'm going to do that because the next thing I'm going to do, and I don't show it on this slide because I want to get all the code so it easily shows up on the screen as I'm talking to you. So then what I do now that I know the length of the list, I can create an array big enough to hold it. And this time is I'm going to save a pointer to each element of that list in an array. So that's the second pass of this data. So now I do my parallel traversal, and I do that with a pragma OMP parallel, pragma OMP4, and now I just do a regular parallel for loop to go through the list. Now when I did that, on one thread it took 48 seconds, and on two threads it took 39 seconds. And then I played around with the clauses. Instead of using the schedule that was default, I used a schedule that was static, and I tried static one. And it went from 45 seconds on one down to 28 seconds on two threads. So you know, that schedule gave me something a little bit better. Um, so this is what I had to go through in order to parallelize that linked list. Really ugly. This is not a pretty sustainable way to do things. So really, it we were able to do it. It worked. But it was ugly and it required three passes to the data. And what you have to remember is in computing today, basically data movement's everything. You know, the, the, the mantra we use in the performance computing world is that computing's free. All you do is you pay for data movement and then the computing costs you nothing, all right? So having to make three passes through the data totally sucks. That's really, really bad. So what we have to do is we have to move beyond this array-based focus that was at the root of OpenMP. And that is indeed what we've done. And we did this in OpenMP 3.0 and beyond, and it's called tasks. And when we start the next unit, we will explore tasks, which is the right way to do these, these sort of linked lists.